Hey, so how's it going? So I'm just going to be talking about the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, fiat money. So as um, the video on fiat money uh, explains, fiat money is a currency that has no intrinsic value and that is made legal tender by a fiduciary duty that is creating a currency or a legal fiction based on trust. So this whole premise of its creation gives the notion that there are no advantages to it because of the way that it is actually created, how it comes about. But there are advantages and there are disadvantages with everything. So uh, some advantages that we find with fiat money are that uh, the government uh, exercises a lot of control when it has a fiat currency that it can control the money supply and uh, in doing this it means that the the government itself is under a responsible uh, authority which is which has a fiduciary responsibility which is a responsibility based on trust so this fiduciary responsibility is how central banks are created or treasuries are created so when you have this um, relationship with the government and the governed it creates this um, expectancy that leads to high investor uh, desire uh, it, it leads to when you have a certain uh, expectancy which is stretched out over an, a number of years this creates an an instance where investors are more attracted to this area because they can they know what their expected returns are and things like that so <clears throat> if you have an an unstable currency or an, a, a currency that is not regulated it means that anything can happen at any time so this is something that is seen as an advantage because the government will have control so another advantage is that it has control over the policy, right? And then the other advantage is that it has control over the liquidity. So liquidity is the most important aspect that you should consider when you are looking at any economy. Liquidity is the withdrawal or the injection of money into a certain system. So the liquidity of money creates cash flow. This creates um, a currency which creates purchasing power, which is electricity. So all of the power is created through the liquid that flows, which creates the turbine, to tur which makes the turbine turn and then that creates electricity and purchasing power and cash flow and charges and transfers. So with liquidity creation um, uh, governed by a central authority, this means that it is easier for the the market to be directed in a certain direction so of course now again we go to the fiduciary responsibility which is based on trust now we have to trust that the the the, the people who are in charge of this system are upstanding citizens who have the best interests at heart which could or could not happen so in most cases this has not been happening to just be completely honest that um, you see that um, in certain cases you have people who are in those positions who are not able to create a system where everybody is enjoying the benefits of an economy but these authorities are put there in order to maintain inflation and to create employment so they're not there to enrich people but it ends up skewing the whole dynamic in one direction or the other so um, the, the creation of liquidity the creation of policies is a very big advantage that creates an economic sovereignty over a country that some countries don't usually have because when you have your own policies and then when you have your own your own ways and means of directing a certain economy this is very important and this creates a, a country that has a, a track record with other participants who look at it and who see it and who view it and want it to invest in it and on the other hand we have the disadvantages and the biggest disadvantage the most blatant disadvantage is the whole fact that um, 
a fiat currency has no value whatsoever so since it has no value it has no value so the reality will come into play sooner or later and as history has always shown the reality will always show itself you will always discover that okay this is how it actually works that um this va this money has no value so at a certain point we have to face that fact so hyperinflation or inflation in general is a result a negative result of a fiat currency so when we have inflation it means that the money is being chipped away over time when the money is being inflated it means that more and more uh, money buys less and less things so with inflation we see that something that used to cost a dollar today now cost a dollar 25 so one dollar last year doesn't buy the same thing this year so this is the the biggest problem that we have with uh, this theory of the modern money theory and uh, if you look at something like gold if you have one kilogram of gold one kg of gold you're still gonna need it in 10 years and uh, if you had it a hundred years ago it was worth something and if you have a kilo of gold today it's worth something and in 20 years it'll still be worth something so I can give you a kilo of gold and tell you to keep it like if I find a treasure map and I go and dig for that gold it still has its value so this is the problem with the fiat currency which is inescapable and this disadvantage uh, seemingly trumps all of the advantages because when we're talking about money we're talking about a unit of exchange right a medium uh, a, a unit of account a medium of exchange and a store of value so when money doesn't have the functionality of being a store of value Value. this means that the the only <laughs> disadvantage is reducing all of the advantages so yeah of course there are certain advantages like uh, we have um, the 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 ability to create a nimble economy a flexible economy that is based on open market operations uh, purchasing agreements fractional reserves and all of these things but at the end of the day the money has no value so this is something that is very important and these are <clears throat> things that we consider in terms of evaluating money in terms of the pros and the cons and uh, everything else that pertains to the cash flow because as the money supply grows the value of it dwindles so the less value that we have in terms of the money supply the more that we can we can um, the more money that we actually have so being richer will make you poorer or make everybody else poorer so this is the problem that we have but with the commodity we also have a disadvantage in the sense that um, where in the sense that the supply and demand will end up governing an entire economy so if this year we uh, mine a lot of gold it means that the currency is going to drop and next year uh, there is uh, there's uh, a surplus of gold and then it rises so this creates certain spikes in the economy and also um, with a commodity based economy the, the, the biggest problem is that growth is very very slow because everything is um, one man's income it, one man's earning one man's profit is another man's income so when you don't have a huge amount of profit because the money supply never changes it means that you're always in this band of money so we only have an infinite amount of money to go around in the whole economy so it's very difficult for the economy to change so this is something that should be noted that it is very 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 difficult to grow an economy uh, in the same way that you can grow an economy while borrowing on a deficit so um, this deficit spending has been working for the American economy the Chinese economy the Japanese economy but at the end of the day they are all facing the problem of reality that alright we've been borrowing on nothing and uh, this 
whole monetary system works hand in hand with a commodity system that part of it has to be redeemed in terms of commodity this is why china is growing gold reserves russia is growing gold reserves and um in terms of the commodity that is backing an economy this is very important so if you look at uh, the saudi arabian uh, growth in the past couple of years this has been based on the commodity itself and not the fiat currency so we could look at that template but we could also look at a certain a different template in africa where all of the commodities are found and we have zero growth so um the commodity in and of itself is not as important but the most important thing is the fiduciary duty which is the the the, the contract of trust that the people have with the authorities this is very very important because you have a place like congo which has all of the commodities that you could ever think about right and at the same time it's not growing or you have a place like venezuela which has the biggest oil reserves in the world but it is not the biggest economy in the world because of the fiduciaries so um there's certain intangibles that we have in terms of businesses money politics power whatever intangibles and these intangibles are fiat so these intangibles are credits so these credits the credence the 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 credentials that we have are very important as intangibles in any economy so they're intangible things that have to be considered and they're in they're they're also tangible things so they're intangibles like things that we can't really uh, point to but things that are very important sometimes more important than actually having money in an economy and then there are certain things that are tangible such as the actual commodity itself tangible but it's not enough in order to get the whole system this is why there are pros and cons in my opinion in the fiat system because something could be uh, on the surface a benefit it could be a benefit that a country has oil venezuela but at the at the end of the day this benefit is <laughs> is a disaster in that country so this is playing out in so many different countries and so many different cases and while this is also a, an issue of power greed guns drugs and stuff like that in different cases like what's happening in iraq and i mentioned congo what's happening in congo so all of these things are happening because of power greed and corruption but at the end of the day the economy is run on certain principles and on certain uh, things that need to have transactions because when we're talking about money we're talking about transactions so transactions need transcendence so for us to grow an economy for money to actually have value it needs to be in a sense or in an environment where transcendence can actually occur so the only uh, disadvantage with the commodity system is that transcendence is pretty slow and uh, in that case it would mean that uh, the people who have a lot of money will have a lot of money because they can keep it forever right if there is no uh notion of transcendence so if you have a commodity economy the best thing to do is to transact so this is what you see in dubai they are trading these are transactions so uh given all of that trade and given their monetary system which is a commodity based system and in some cases a representative system so the money represents the oil or the money is backed by the oil so <clears throat> a fiat currency is where you just decide to borrow and borrow and borrow but this has a limit because if you look at what happened in germany the same thing happened in 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 america the continental dollar was 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 sacked because it didn't work so all of these things have to be taken into consideration and uh, there are benefits which are control of policy and control of liquidity and faster growth right but then what is the cost of this fast growth so you have to sacrifice a lot for that growth to actually happen and that is the problem and the the hugest con <laughs> it's actually a con is that there there is inflation like the money is worthless so it's worthless and 
that in itself says it all. The money is worthless. So, um, you know, all of our governments do this. Most of them do this. So this is the status quo. And I don't know what you think would be the, the best replacement and how that would work out. But uh, I do believe that a commodity economy has its advantages and also has its disadvantages. But um, in terms of uh, a case where you have a crisis, we all want to go to the commodity economy. But in terms where we have a boom, we have no problem with it. So this is also the cycle of uh, the business cycle, which is also the psychological cycle. So um, it's quite interesting. So thank you so much for watching this. And uh, you can just add some pros and cons that you see in the comments and stuff like that. So thanks a lot for your time. And uh, just look at some links for some cool stuff. And thanks for watching this again.